In this video, we're going to talk about extracting records and data from mobile devices. Now, first of all, let's talk about what we mean by mobile devices. Well, we've all familiar with cell phones and different types of cellular devices. Those are mobile devices. But a mobile data digital forensics can also mean a tablet or a larger form mobile device. Uh, even things like Kindle fires or Amazon fires, larger devices that have a Wi-Fi or 5G um, connections, even hardened devices that maybe can't power up or that have damage can always uh, be digital forensic analyzed. So what are the records that exist on mobile devices? Well, first of all, the records not only exist on the mobile device itself, but even connected devices. One of the things we find in many cases is when a mobile device connects to a laptop or a Wi-Fi or a router or even a vehicle, it shares information back and forth, and much of that information can be collected and analyzed. For example, when a mobile device is in the pocket of a person and it's in a vehicle, that device is going to connect with the vehicle infotainment system and it may extract things like the vehicle speed, the vehicle location, Bluetooth information, um, what channels are on the radio, even things like doors opening and closing many times create records uh, in that infotainment system. So once we have identified a mobile device that is a target for digital forensics, then we're going to look at what types of records. And there's two types of records. The first one we'll look at is data records. And the next one we're going to look at is device records. And on data records, the types of records that can be extracted are simple things like contacts, the phone book list, who are listed as stored records, the name, the phone number, an email address. In addition to that, we're going to extract SMS Records. So if a person has sent emails, voicemails, text messages, any one of those record sources will have an associated pathway. It will show the recipient and receiver of that message, the date and time. If there are attached files, photos, videos, sometimes audio files with a voicemail message, those are going to be extracted. In addition, many records also contain metadata, which are things like location information for a GPS on a picture, for example. The next thing we're going to look at extracting is the call log record. So if there's a record of when calls were placed, the duration of the call, uh, it was the inbound or outbound call, uh, what is the phone number, obviously. The next thing we're going to look at is calendar information. Many times a person will use a calendar to schedule events, maybe appointments, and maybe reservations with hotels, with restaurants. Sometimes it's done through Google Calendar. Sometimes there's an app on the phone. Now, the next thing we're going to do is start to look at data records themselves, things like picture files, thumbnail files, videos. All of those are going to be held in some type of an album. Even records that are deleted remain on that device for a period of time after the deletion occurs. Once that's done, we're going to look at what are the different email accounts. Sometimes it'll go through um, Google or Apple or a third-party app like WhatsApp or a throwaway email. Uh, a lot of times people will use uh, something like Yahoo Mail to use a secret email through a browser. Then we're going to look at the browser itself and see what is the web history. What are the websites that were visited? Were there websites for um, locations, for reservations, for appointments? Did somebody find out where a hotel is? Um, did they look at a news article? In that web history, in addition, there may be cookies that will be stored to show when that person went to the website previously. The last thing we'll do is look at application data. And the application data are records held within the apps on the phone that determine what is the um, 
the common settings for that app? What is the standard default settings for that app? Once we're completed with the data records, we're going to move on to the device records. And some of these will be the same, but we're going to look a little deeper. For example, on the device, there may be a contact list itself. It may also connect with a cloud service that holds some records that aren't on the device. Uh, when we look at the SMS messages, again, we're going to look to see are there photos retained on the device or are there photos that are in the cloud. The call log data on the device will also be extrapolated to a cloud service for that phone. So when you log into your account for, let's say, Android, you'll see a record of all your calls and some of that's not going to be on the phone. Once we start looking at the data on the phone rather than what's in the cloud, we're going to see if there's any differences. Are there anything that's deleted from the phone but still remaining in the underlying account? In the application data on the phone, there may be multiple user accounts. Sometimes people will create separate accounts, one for public, one for hidden. And within the phone itself, instead of just looking at the icons for uh, different programs, we're going to look to see if there's a grouping or hidden programs that don't have an easy to find icon. A lot of times people will hide communication programs like WhatsApp or other um, dating apps like Tinder and not have the uh, icon right on their phone. The last thing we're going to look at is what does the file system look like? Are there deleted files? Are there blank spaces? Are there deleted files? Um, are there uh, records where it used to be filled up with data and now it's empty and where did that data go? So digital forensics on a mobile device is a valuable way of finding out the history of the use of that device, how it was used, who it communicated with, uh, where it was located, and what records are associated with those communications, photos, images, um, even sometimes voicemail messages, somebody leaving a message, somebody uh, receiving a message, can be helpful to determine what the activity is for the person using that phone.